Right, welcome back, Jerry. Wonderful to be talking with you about this healing the me. I see a new fascinating concept. Okay, what have you got for us next? Where are we going? We're going to dive a little bit deeper into the science and background of this. All right, well, where we are now, we are at chapter four of the book Closeness in Love which is available at closenessinlove.com. And we can usually, how much closeness and how to measure it. We can usually recognize closeness and we can have it. And we notice when it's gone, but how do we describe it? You know, some things are easy to measure. You know, we all pretty much know how old we are or how much money in the bank. And we usually know when we got married or when we got divorced. But how do you measure closeness? Well, in 1992, Arthur Aaron and two of his colleagues put together a study, and they came up with these Venn, seven Venn diagrams. And what they did with these, they went around and asked people, how would you describe the relationship you're in? And different people would say their relationship is in one of these seven. And when I saw these diagrams, I've been familiar with the concept of closeness, but when I saw those Venn diagrams, I'm like, ah, this is the way that you can really translate something so ethereal as the thing of closeness, uh, so intangible, and at least put it in a way that it's measurable. And so we've numbered these one through seven. Actually, they might have done that easily. And, you know, at one, you know, they almost barely never connect. And, and you get up to... Can I step in a minute, Jerry? Just, just make it clear. I mean, these circles are the sort of person's own ecosystem, yes? Uh, you know, it's not just a spot viewpoint, but it's the whole ecosystem, which are uh, blending and overlapping in varying degrees. So each of the circles is one person, one person's ecosystem. Yes. In fact, if you look at the logo of the lovers in training, we, did, we took two hearts. And we have a pink heart and a purple heart, and where they overlap is red. <laughs> now, on the Lovers in Training logo, the Closeness and Love Trainer, we put those you know, overlapping a lot because, for the most part, most people do want more closeness, even the ones who are afraid of it. Uh, so we are hoping to help people to be able to have more closeness because it does help them deepen not only in their love for themselves and their partner, but also in their love for God. But yes, these are like representative of where each person is at and then where they connect and where they don't. Right. Yeah. And so what you find on these things is different people have different comfort levels on different ones. And again, they're not uniform. Uh, you know, people have a comfort range. Some people yeah. might like to get really close <laughs> once in a while and then rest of the time hang out there. The real problem comes in is when the range of one partner and the range of another are so different. One partner really wants just a little bit. The other partner wants a lot. And then what will happen is the partner that wants more closeness and not getting it from their partner is feeling ignored and disregarded and just treated like they don't exist. And the partner who wants less closeness is feeling smothered and chased. And yeah. not that this dance can't be worked out. Uh, in fact, Harville Hendricks is partly you know, where some of this work came from, too. Harville Hendricks estimated that about 80% of people use the terms fusers and isolators would be a blend of a fuser and an isolator. So you got one person who wants a little bit of closeness and one person who wants a lot. And they spend their whole relationship trying to negotiate this out. <laughs> yeah. And about 10% of the relationships would be with two fuses and about 10% of the relationships would be with two isolators. He considered those relationships boring. Now I can tell you, I happen to be a deep fuser and I'm in a relationship with another deep fuser. I don't consider it boring at all. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yes, and I've been in relationship with isolators. And in fact, I've been in relationships where the person has been more of a fuser than me. And with you, I mean, once you're already in a relationship, I wouldn't recommend anybody throw it away to try to find another one. But if you're trying to find one from scratch, I would certainly recommend people try to find one where they match. Yeah, yeah. 
So it's viewpoint, you're saying, Jerry. A different person, each person has a different tolerance uh, and what they feel comfortable with. And it's important to establish what, first of all, you need to know what your own comfort level is, don't you? And then the, the, the strong or important people in your life. Otherwise, you get this mismatch. Now, I know in the book, <laughs> when I read it, you, you told that funny story from Annie Hall. Remember they, when they go off to see the psych and they run them, run them, the frames side by side. <laughs> oh, it's a split screen just like we have. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Probably the first movie they ever did it. Did you see the scene? Uh, yes, I did. Yeah, uh, uh, I've forgotten who said which, but you know, it's like, uh, oh, we're always having sex. I mean, like three times a week. And the other one's saying we hardly ever have sex. It's only three times a week. It's exactly. all. It's all perspective. <laughs> um, and you know, it's interesting you mentioned that because you know, again, when you talk about closeness, it's often hard to measure. But how often you're having sex is quite measurable. Mm -hmm. That's and true. so a lot of times people will focus on that and say, oh, he wants too much sex or she doesn't want enough sex or whatever. But in fact, it's really the closeness they're looking for. The sex is just the measurable part. Yes. And so a lot of times, you know, sometimes something even other than sex would satisfy the craving for the closeness. They just can't quite quantify it in such a way. But understanding these concepts, they can see and it's much more than about sex. Yeah, yeah. Okay, back to the Venn diagrams. These are awesome, yeah? Uh, yes. Well, again, you know, when you work with the numbers, you can see that they, don't, they can apply to many things. Uh, again, you know, somebody might be, they want a lot of physical closeness, but don't want much emotional closeness and much. So again, you know, these Venn diagrams, we talk about the relationship as a whole, but again, when you break them out, to the various parts, there's all kinds of ways to dissect and understand this. And you can also look at the fact that, well, you know, somebody might say, well, I really want a deep connection once in a while that might go to a level six, but that's not where I want to hang out. And finding the blend that matches for both of you so that ideally both partners can get satisfaction on how much closeness they're sharing both in duration and frequency and depth. I say both actually, that's really three um, mm -hmm. of all five of these different things in the right match that you're feeling fulfilled and deepening and that's what the diagrams are there to help understand and explain. That's a lot of variables, isn't it? Five times three is a lot of variables. No wonder we struggle with our relationships. <laughs> oh, and, and again, you know, you could take this five and turn it into more, and you could take this three and turn it into more. We're just trying to yeah. chunk this into yeah. some manageable parts. But, yeah, yeah. when you fine-tune it, and, you know, and there's more than just those seven gradations, like you say, you suggested maybe one even further apart, and there may be some that are totally overlapped. I just took the ones that the people that did the study, um, the Aaron's, I think, were they? Yeah, Arthur yeah. Aaron. Uh, I just used theirs. And by the way, if you notice in the book, the diagrams are still kind of fuzzy. Anybody who can get us better diagrams will be fine. This was just a first draft book, and we haven't really increased the graphics yet. So if somebody can make us better graphics and get them off, we would love to do this. This is a open to collaboration on developing this. Okay, good point. Now, go, just go through the seven levels then, Jerry, just to wrap up this particular segment. Uh, let's well, again, like I say, Keith, they're kind of um, artificial in the seven, but what, let's see, we call them, uh, at, the, at the first one, we said, you know, they basically almost never connect, never very deeply or for never very long. At level two, they're connecting once in a great while, hardly ever very deeply or for very long. At level three, they like to connect occasionally, uh, not often, <laughs> very deeply or for very long. At four, um, they're pretty much about equal at some limits. Um, actually, I think when you get to five, it's probably where they're more or less about equal. And there they probably like, you know, deeply with long closeness for sometimes long periods of time. And yeah, they have about as much of their life that they share with each other as they do to themselves. At level six, now they're really connecting deeply with most kinds of closeness for long periods of time, and they're sharing more of their lives with each other than either of them has to themselves. 
and at seven, their living closeness is a way of life with deepening closeness on every level. Right. Yeah. Okay, that's a good foundation on which to go forward. So the next segment, let's take a look at how we're going to use this marvelous insight. Thanks for now, Jerry. Take care. Thank you, Keith.